All right, got us a Honda here, an oldie. Let's see what we got. Uh, B O Y A. B on a tag, usually on the side. Seventeen millimeters on your banjo. Bolts for your cooler lines. Clip underneath your wiring harness here. Pull up on it and it'll slide off. There's usually a bracket right here, it's uh, U shaped. They probably took it off. And we'll just leave our vent on there. 10 millimeters on our solenoids. careful with these. Don't rip them if you can help it. Otherwise you're probably going to be buying a, a solenoid. I don't think they st still don't sell these separate. Ten millimeters on your <coughs> speed sensor. Sometimes these here can be really difficult to get out. Oh, it's been quite a while since I've seen one of these. We're good, getting in a bunch of old stuff. Fixing to have a plain old 4T60 coming out. I haven't done one of those and I can't even remember. I'm on out for there. Let go. Trying to keep from breaking this thing. There we go. Alright, 10 millimeters on our end cover. Bunch of different sizes. I'll I'll give them to you if you're not familiar with them. You might want to keep them separated. All right, 14 millimeters on our bell housing bolts, our case bolts. Flip this up on its end. Uh, make sure that your linkage is off the front of the transmission there. Alright, 
side here there's a little tab bent over this bolt right here Bend that back over. Eight millimeter. We're bolting our keeper. And if there's a spring, it goes on the back side here, loops in right here. Alright, we can take our end cover up now. There's several spots around here where you can tap up. Let's go ahead and leave these tubes in there for right now. Here's our park actuator, pivot pin, and return spring. On here there's another keeper. We're going to bend that tab up. This one's a 10 millimeter. We're going to pull it all the way over. Our bolt on our keeper. We got our return spring sits on the back, loops around this little pin that goes through here. Here's the other two pieces for it. And let's see. And don't remember what size that used to be. Inch and five sixteenths. So these two are going to be right handed, this is going to be left handed. washers that go underneath it, the uh, um, dish goes down. And it's going to tap these down. If you can't hit it straight, use something else. You don't want to screw those threads up. As long as you hit it straight, you're okay do it all the time. And use the air hammer with that bit. Actually, yeah, let me make sure I can use this bit. Use this bit. It's going to fit down in there better. Yep. Less of a chance of screwing them threads up. I'm going to pry up just a little bit. We got that flat bearing, cage bearing, another flat bearing. And come on. Gotta be difficult. And that washer. And I just use zip ties to zip tie all this together. And what I'll do is once I get it zip tied together, I'll separate this all. So everything can get washed inside of them. These here, and these two adjustable heel bars. I 
and if you happen to chip one of these teeth you can just get a, a angle grinder with the scotch brite pad and you can just buff where it chips it and it'll work just fine Alrighty. I don't know what I did with my socket. Luckily I got spares. All right, 10 millimeters. I'm going to pry this up uh, off of here. And there's a little cage bearing. It usually stays in there. That's your reverse idler. You're going to move it back. Now we should be able to get our case up. And I'm going to be able to pry right there. And then over here, I'm going to get a hammer and I'm going to tap up right there. Now, this one may lift off. It's already loose enough. washer bearing goes here check your center case bearings make sure they're not rough and then there's a another tab that we need to bend over right there all right our reverse idler if it has no groove on it, if it's the same on both sides, it doesn't matter which way this gear goes. 10 millimeter. And pull this gear off. Check this gear right in here where the slider goes. Make sure it's not chewed up. We got our cage bearing. Pay attention to how your slider is. It's facing up. Make sure this is not chewed up. Make sure your fork is in good shape. This hub here goes with the step up. And then here again, you want to make sure that their teeth are not all chewed up. okay and I zip tie all that together and separate it all this gear of course we had our washer our flat bearing two cage bearings flat bearing and our flat washer. Pull this drum off. And a pair of snap ring pliers. Pull this washer up. It's got a step to it. There's two half moon washers. I keep these washers separate. They always seem to find a way to disappear. <clears throat> we got our washer here. Cage bearing. Flat bearing. And I just do 
zip tie that stuff together because it makes it quicker. We got a shim and our race that goes in our for our diff bearing on the center case. Be careful of these bearings, they tend to eat up pretty bad. Alright, we got a wire clip in right here. The only thing this clip is for is for assembly. You can actually throw it away if you wanted to. I always put it back on. I mean, it ain't that big of a deal. Just pull that wire clip off. Keep that separate also. We got our shim, our flat bearing. We got a collar with two cage bearings and a flat bearing. Most of this stuff is usually always in pretty good shape. Keep this drum separate. You want to keep track of which drum goes on the main shaft and which one goes on the counter shaft. Here's our main shaft. flat bearing, our gear, caged bearing, flat bearing, and our collar. Alright, down in here is another wire clip. Just need a couple sharp objects. You can do it with either scribes or you can do it with pocket screwdrivers. Come on, where's the end of it? That was it. Eyes are failing me. It's right there. Why are you being difficult? find it in a minute. Alright, so we got another sleeve, two more half washers, spacer, our sprag assembly, make sure it turns one way and locks the other. There's a flat bearing up inside of there. I just put this together the way it comes off. all about saving time. So I zip tie it together and then I separate it. Well, I should put these bearings in there. You have this color and a flat bearing and a flat washer right there. Go ahead and put this in there before I forget. counter shaft. Just check all your teeth and make sure everything's okay. And like I say, most of the time those hardly ever go bad. Check your pin that goes through your diff. Make sure it's not loose. Make sure your spider gears aren't got chunks missing out of them. I've only ever seen a couple pins come out of here. 
make sure you're not ring grooved in either one of these. Then what I'm going to do is, uh, here's our race that goes in this side of the case, no shim. I'm just going to stack all my valve body off to the side. The only thing we really need to be concerned with is that bottom piece down there. take our dowel pins out of our case. Okay, I'm going to need a chrome one. Alright, there's a, two dowel pins and a separator plate on each level of your valve body. Pay attention to how your uh, plunger comes out of here. Our stator. Make sure our bearing's okay. Reverse servo. Here's our wire. Our last 10 millimeter. Dow pin. If the dow pin stays in the case, just leave it there. All right, this is where we need to be concerned. It's on the back side here. We're gonna look where the gear goes. It's bad, it's gonna be eat up right there. Not very common for that to happen. All right, we'll take our drums apart now. I just go ahead and I mark everything. And this one came off the counter shaft, so I'll put a C on it. The drum, I don't have to worry about, it's the only one that looks like it. Pay attention to how your dish plates go. the clip with the clutch pack. There again, it's just all about saving time. Zip tie it all together. Now, this one came off the main shaft, so I'm gonna put, usually I put X on one side and I'll put an M for main shaft. And I'll mark each piece of that. The piston also. And I'll mark an X on that side. And I'll put an O and an M. The 
This is the main shaft. You put a dam on it. Alright, now I'll do the same thing on this drum. I'll put an X and a uh, S for secondary. Apart, get it uh, written up, and we'll be back. All right, what was the complaint? Not shifting, making a high pitch noise. Converter come apart. That's what always comes. What, what happens on these things? So, uh, LS kit, filter, and put a Sonax valve body plug kit. Uh, torque converter was a B. Little, little lowercase b uh, pretty much that's I mean that's all that happens on most of these is the converter comes apart and depending on how long they drive it is how damaged <clears throat> the clutches get so this is what they usually look like other than maybe the diff bearings might be bad sometimes so we'll come back when it's sold